Welcome back guys, in this tutorial we're going to create uh, a desk lamp in 3ds Max and Substance Painter and right now we're trying to create, um, as you can see here, um, a, a, a box which is going to be the base for this desk lamp. So uh, this is going to be a vintage one, it's going to be um, something old, something from the 50s or something uh, like that. So as you can see here, right now we're creating a base, of course we are going to make sure that, that we're going to follow our uh, methods that we used before which are going to be very um, uh, very very easy to use and they are kind of tools that we used before and they should be obvious for you and easy to understand if you've been uh, someone who used to uh, consume my content so as you can see here um, I'm going to use for the most part the edge extrusion method and um, some other techniques that we usually use so the base probably is the, the piece that has most uh, the, the the greatest amount of polygons and probably it has the most details. So as you can see here, we're trying to bridge some of these um, some of these um, between some of these edges, and uh, we're trying to extrude some edges. And of course, uh, in order to perform the edge extrusion method, you need to keep holding Shift all the time because uh, it is it is a very important tool and. Uh, as I always say, it kind of gives you more control and more freedom, and also it is a little bit faster in that regard. So, uh, as you can see here, we are we are kind of trying to create something that looks like stairs, and um, it doesn't really matter the proportion between each step of these stairs. So, um, probably kind of you can you can see that I'm not kind of being accurate or trying to measure everything uh, perfectly which is fine I guess because it does not really matter that much um, as you can see here I'm trying to actually um, break the proportion a little bit because in the back uh, in the back uh, the part in the back is kind of um, very uh, narrow and uh, <clears throat> the, the one in the front the steps are kind of wide and big so uh, this is kind of a distinction and um, it's not completely proportional between these two sides so uh, it's, it also kind of breaks the um, kind of the um, um, I don't know how to name that but uh, it's kind of something that we uh, usually when usually when um, when you try to create something you kind of try to break the symmetry and kind of uh, you, you kind of make it feel make it feel like it is something unique and there is some sense of uniqueness to it so this way we we are trying to make sure that everything looks interesting to the viewer so that's why I like pieces that have lots of details to them and uh, kind of they are interesting to look at and you kind of feel like this is something interesting and special to as as a piece of art so uh, right now I'm trying to create some uh, some edges as you can see because there are going to be a few pieces a few uh, half cylinders uh, they're going to be placed um, in the back and um, they are some two interesting pieces interesting pieces and um, as I said before um, as, as you can see here um, this is a kind of um, a simple way of creating them rather than trying to create it trying to create it from scratch which is which is not very practical so we're gonna use some cylinders and we're gonna try to attach everything together um, even though this is a process that might that may and will take a little bit longer than the um, what it takes to create something from scratch using using the um, the tools you have and trying to create something that looks like cylinder but it is not like creating a cylinder like this and attaching it to um, to the body or the base of this lamp so we're going to use the the snap tool S from the keyboard in order to snap these vertices in the right place of course it's not going to be perfect so expect some imperfection All right, so uh, you try to snap that cylinder in its position, and um, as you can see here, um, sometimes you've got to do stuff and go back and try to fix them. So as you can see here, we're trying to create a place where uh, 
where this should be um, welded. So as you can see here right now, we, uh, but before we do this, we can actually, we have to attach these together using the attach tool. And we're going to select the vertices that are going to be welded, or we're going to weld just weld everything. And since these vertices are, are going to be, or are very close to each other, it's going to be very easy to be welded together. But sometimes when we have vertices that probably are close, we are risking kind of um, some accidents. So we need to avoid that. All right, it seems like we need to add an edge in the center because we need to um, we need to connect some of the uh, or that vertex in the center exactly because it's important that we do this. All right, so when we when you see some black weird looking things on your surface, it means that the smoothing groups are messed up. That's why you've seen me trying to fix the uh, auto smooth everything or just um, re, uh, rearrange the smoothing groups and try to relax the smoothing groups, let's just say. Uh, as you can see here, I'm trying to actually readjust the proportion between kind of the elements or the sections of the, um, the lamp base, which is something very important because as you move forward and as you create more of that piece, you're going to see that. Uh, probably you don't like it how it looks right now so we're gonna have to adjust it and try to reposition some of some of its aspects okay so um, for the most part right now we're trying to kind of build the um, kind of the uh, the block out for this part even though it's not that complicated and um, there isn't a lot we can add but as you can see, this is an important step, which is uh, also um, trying to create symmetry here because uh, symmetry is a very important tool. It's, it allows us to uh, avoid doing the work twice and kind of lifts uh, some heavy weights. And also it's very important because we want the same result we are working on to appear on the other side. So no matter how good we are, probably we're not going to be able to uh, create something exactly similar on the other side if you don't have the symmetry tool. All right, right now uh, we're trying to create kind of um, uh, like kind of the uh, if this is a foot, if this base we can call the foot, then this is a leg. So this this is the leg of the lamp, and as you can see here, uh, I'm trying to extrude this, keep holding shift all the time in order to do this. Uh, we can create this using the line or um, something similar, but I think this this way is also good enough. Um, as you can see, I'm trying to chamfer that edge because we need to have something smooth right there. Um, we can actually add two or three edges, which is going to be fine. Also, we need to position uh, position it in between those two half cylinders. Also, as you can see, we are trying to now go to the other side. So this is kind of not not moving on one plane, but um, it's working in space. It's just actually moving in space. So we had to break from the previous direction to that new direction. And also right now, we're going to have to use the... Um, the, the chamfer tool in order to chamfer those two edges because they are not that hard. They are kind of, there is a soft transition right there. All right, so uh, for this, uh, for this uh, edge right there, we need to probably move it like this and chamfer the edges again. Of course, we're not going to keep it as it is, so the shell modifier is extremely important, as you can see. The shell modifier allows us to add thickness, which is important. I usually don't try to, I usually don't kind of like working on things as uh, when they are kind of thick, like boxes or anything that has three dimensions to it. So I usually like working with the planes and if, if possible, and then use the shell modifier in order to bring it to the third dimension. All right, so um, as you can see here, uh, we're now 
kind of trying to create the the shade of this desk lamp so uh, actually the proportions um, don't really seem right until we we finish it so um, if if you see me kind of struggling going back and forth trying to get the proportions right without actually um, and actually uh, it, it is actually a good thing if we use reference images but usually the um, thing is uh, for the most part the reference images I found I find uh, it's kind of does not have the the front and the side view that I like to use when actually uh, kind of trying to use the reference image in the viewport which is an okay thing because uh, for the most part if you have experience working in 3d and kind of measuring the proportion using only reference images you're gonna be okay and also there is an important thing which is you can always go back and adjust whatever you've done and uh, kind of tweak it uh, the way you like and the way that seems that seems appropriate All right, you can adjust these vertices as you please because um, it seems like uh, the way you place them does matter. So we will tweak until we find kind of find it really nice and really um, looking uh, the way we want it to. So uh, actually, right now we we are going to create the lamp that is going to be inside the lampshade. And to do this, we need, of course, some thickness for this shade because uh, we're going to base our next creation or next piece on top of that surface. And usually the inside surface uh, does not help us that much. So we're not going to rely on it. So we're going to have to use the shell modifier in order to do that. So this cylinder is going to be the base actually for creating the lamp holder or the bulb holder the bulb holder and then creating the bulb itself so we'll try to do this to our best ability but it seems like um, it's not really uh, aligned with the horizon or the vertical axis so um, we're gonna have probably to delete that altogether since uh, sometimes the um, Kind of the uh, the alignment with the grid or the auto grid does not really always work. So sometimes we uh, this is this tool or this option can be problematic, and we need to check whether whatever we we are creating against each surface is working the way we want it to. So as you can see, it's kind of tilted a few degrees, and this is not really uh, this is something that is not gonna help us. So we're gonna deactivate the auto grid and create something free in space so even though the alignment is not going to be perfect but we're going to figure it out later and it's okay actually if surfaces are are overlapping a little bit because it's um it's not that important and it's not going to be seen in the first place so we think this is going to be the lamp holder Well, the bulb holder so <clears throat> use the um, use the shift shift all the time because we're gonna have to uh, use the ex edge extrusion method and this piece here has some details to it so we're gonna create lots of details and these details are actually and these details actually are not going to um, are not gonna be part of the low poly so they're going to be part of the high poly only and um, we're going to have to remove them when we uh, when we reach the part in which we're going to work on the low poly version
All right, uh, we just selected a few edges and connected them together. This is this way we're gonna be able to create some rings right there. And what do we need? What we need to do is actually we're gonna try to select everything and attach them together. Uh, actually, this not, I, I didn't actually mean what I said. Just um, uh, select everything and extrude them. Don't attach them. So as you can see here, uh, this allowed us to create those nice details. And right now we're going to do the same thing on this tilted surface, but uh, we're going to go with one um, with one ring. And also we're not going to extrude it because we're going to extrude only one edge on one or one loop of edges. Uh, because we want it to look a little bit different. All right, so I think this is going to be the end of the tunnel. We're going to close a little bit here. And we're going to, uh, in order to make sure that everything is going to be functional, we're going to make sure they are, we are leaving enough space for the bolt, which is going to be placed inside this cylinder, which is the bulb holder. So we need to measure exactly where, what or what, this it, what, what kind of uh, uh, space is going to allow us to place the bulb in. So this this sphere we are, we are creating right now is going to represent the bulb and of course we're not going to leave it as it is. Uh, we're going to go with something like this probably 0 0.7 0 0.6 or 0.7 or 0.8 depending on how you want it to look. And we're going to use the border and um, edge extrusion, keep holding shift all the time in order to finish the bolt. Uh, of course, we need to push it inside in order to hide some of the imperfections. And we're going to use the alignment tool in order to align, align, uh, align them together. Sometimes the alignment tool does not work properly because the, uh, because of the axis of the object we are trying to align it to. If the axis is not in the right place for, or it is not in the in the uh, uh, center of the geometry we are trying to align it to, then we're gonna have some weird, weird results. So keep that in mind. I don't know exactly what. Uh, to be honest, the the lamp that should be there. I don't know what exactly how it should like it, how it should look. So I went with something generic, generic some traditional bulb probably the bulb they have they had right then or, or in that time uh, is not this similar to what you can see here but I think we can we can get away with this because <laughs> who cares probably we should be more specific and more historically accurate but we're trying to have some fun and the bulb, to be honest, is not something that hard to replace. If I later discover that this is uh, actually not appropriate, we can I can change it in, in any time. It's not going to be that hard. All right, so are we we are right now trying to adjust some of the polygons we worked on previously. We can actually put the push this outside. Probably later I'm gonna decide to to hide it. Probably not. We will see. Sometimes I try to keep uh, try to keep things simple. All right, we're going to use this screw or this pin uh, in order to um, in order to position it in uh, some uh, places where it should belong. So probably here in the bottom 
of the foot or the bottom of the leg. We're gonna need it. We're gonna need one. Um, I actually like when I have similar pieces that that don't really have to be created twice. So. Uh, of course, this is going to be a little bit different, as you can see here, because um, the reference set, so. All right, so this ring here is going to be an extra detail we're going to use uh, in order to add some accuracy to the model we are creating. To be honest, if uh, I don't know if you are still watching or I am talking to myself here, but I'm pretty pretty sure that probably few guys or gals are still still watching so far. Um, if I like to go deeper sometimes and try to explore and try to create some interesting stuff, but for the most part, I think the, compl the level of complexity I am um, I am kind of using or <clears throat> trying to teach you um, is enough for the moment because the most important thing is grasping the essence. Of the techniques and the um, the understanding and the the mechanics I'm using in order to get my results here. So complexity of the models is not really that much. I'm kind of if if I'm going to explain to you all the all the mechanics and all the steps behind creating a low poly game ready model using a mug or a cup, and you're gonna understand and grasp this and use it. On your own to create extremely detailed models is going to be good for me and i think this level of complexity is enough to explain probably it's a little bit too much because if you if you want to understand the whole picture probably you want you don't want to sit through two hours and probably uh, not <laughs> i don't know how kind of how receptive you are to these tutorials but probably not everyone is going to be able to understand everything uh completely so right now I just created a line and uh, this line I converted it or just rendered it, rendered it in the viewport and rotated the, the angle about 45 degrees in order to kind of make it look like we start, we created this using a box or something. It looks like it is a, a combination of boxes attached together or something of that sort. So this piece here is important because I don't know what's its function, but it seems like it is something important that we will probably um, have a real life function for it. All right, we are trying to copy these cylinder. This they, they look like rings or something like that. I think they they are necessary in order to kind of keep these screws and bolts in place. Or probably to avoid fraction and tighten things up. All right, so copy those as an instance, and copying as an instance or creating instances is very important uh, because sometimes when you try to create stuff and you need to have control over all the pieces that are similar then instances are very extremely important because when you change one the others are going to be changed automatically and this is very great
All right, it seems like we didn't finish working on uh, the foot. We'll just call it the foot. Um, uh, right now, we are we are trying to create some details. Even though it seems like the details we're trying to create, they are not that complicated. Not really. But um, the uh, the sheer amount of vertices we have here is kind of a little bit scary. It's it's a little bit scary because um, it seems like we're gonna have to do some manual work here. And to be honest, we can get we can get away with lots of lots of miss uh, kind of I would say um, some imperfections in the mesh. Specific, specifically in the high poly because uh, it has so many vertices and the density, the sheer density of the model is going to be a little bit forgiven if we screw up some few vertices here and there or some we kind of don't really create any polygons and leave out some angles unchecked. Sometimes we can use, for example, instead of using support edges and stuff, which we'll do in a few minutes, uh, sometimes we can just use some tools like the chamfer tool which is going to allow us to automate this but the chamfer tool is not accurate the, um, the the level of complexity and the progress they made for the uh, chamfer tool is not really it's not really going to give us the results we are looking for or it's not going to be as perfect as doing it manually using support edges so right now we're trying to actually create some edges in order to uh, we can actually avoid this process to be honest I kind of I don't know try to keep things look sophisticated or something like that or trying trying to teach you how to uh, organize your your model but honestly we can just target to weld some of these vertices early on before we kind of bring them all the way to the inside which is which is very possible and very doable probably in the future I'm gonna leave this kind of uh, leave this um, perfection or perfectionism behind because in the end of the day the high poly as, um, as, as as a game developer or as a, as a game modeler it's not important the high poly for us it's just a tool to imprint or to kind of bake the uh, the details from the high to the low and it's not gonna add a lot to the um, to our result it's actually it's not gonna be visible so the high poly is one of the things that are not gonna be visible in the uh, in, in, in the final product like for example let's just say a good example of this is uh, is the work of the concept artist a concept artist does create some amazing pictures and concepts and illustrations but they don't make it to the game or they don't make it to the movie that you're gonna see you see the final product for example if someone hands me a concept of for example a robot or a character and I model this character the final result in the game char the character is gonna be 3D in the game and the 2D is not gonna be seen in the game so you see, some sometimes you, you need to do stuff that are gonna, not going to be in the final result, and it's okay. But try to actually get kind of the, uh, I would say, try to do it uh, good enough, kind of do your work uh, in a manner that is acceptable, but if you can, kind of quote-unquote cheat a little bit and try to shorten your way or kind of find a shortcut that allows you to do less work and work smart is gonna be okay too. Oh, and over time, of course, when you do things over and over and over again, kind of it becomes basic stuff for you. And when you reach this point, it means that you're gonna actually start innovating a little bit and try to find new ways of doing stuff. Probably not completely new, but trying to find ways in order to do your work faster and try to do your work smarter probably and and you need to shorten the amount of time necessary in order to do the job in the right way and also reduce the amount of effort you spend and sometimes yeah sometimes 
over time you're going to learn stuff and you're going to figure out that whatever whatever you've been doing was not really worth it and it was consuming um time and energy and um, throwing away throwing it to waste and also the tools are important don't get me wrong here because there are some extremely good tools and probably i i'm not i'm not the kind of person who tries to figure out what is the the best tools the best tool to do the job or kind of what is the latest tool what is the new update on and so on. i person i personally have no problem working with 3ds max 2012 i can do my job kind of uh I accept that probably uh, i need the this the uh the swift loop which is i need for creating uh support edges which is which is a new tool i believe it was introduced in 2013 or 14 so some tools are pretty good but generally speaking autodesk does not introduce some rev revolutionary tools all the time that's why probably you should expect some don't expect too much this, this is what i was trying to say so as you can see here we're trying to we are trying to let's let's see all right so uh, we're trying to work on on this shade here because for now it's very basic and there are so many free vertices that we need to attach together so uh, I figure out in order to do this properly probably we're going to bridge these because this is going to be a faster way in order to do this uh, properly and also it's gonna save us some time and effort as well this is what I was talking about previously all right we're, we're going to try to uh, connect these edges and create some nice kind of connection between the between these vertices all right so we're going to bridge between those of course we're going to count how many we have and we're going to try to bridge between those using the bridge tool like this All right, so when we're done, we're going to split this geometry in half. And uh, of course, we're going to use the symmetry modifier because, as I said before, this this modifier is very helpful in order to avoid doing the work twice. Also, the, uh, <clears throat> the surface in the bottom is not necessary because it was just a way in order to do our, our job faster. Uh, it seems like uh these edges here need to be smooth and uh, right now as we smooth these these edges it seems like it is now getting closer to what we want it to look like so Uh, it seems like it is a mess right now, but we can fix it, really. Alright, so re removing the shadow modifier is going to make it so easy for us compared to, where, to what it was before. And uh, right now we're going to try to toggle to weld some of these vertices. I'm not going to say this is the best way of doing it, but this this way works. Alright, so we're going to do the same thing we've done before. We're going to use the symmetry modifier.
All right, so now it looks way more realistic and uh, appropriate compared to what it was. Okay, right now uh, we're trying to create the two versions, one for the high poly or two layers, one for the high poly and one for the low poly. This is extremely important because, uh, as, as we said before, this is going to be a game ready model. So we're going to have to create a high poly and low poly. So right now what we're going to do is um, uh, we're going to add support edges. And this process is extremely important because the high poly need to be need, needs to be smooth and it needs to be soft and everything else and the low poly has to go the other way but we're gonna talk about this later so probably I'm not gonna do so much or a lot of explaining here because this is basic stuff there isn't actually lots of depth here to discuss this uh, support edges so these support edges are important but they are very simple so what you're gonna do is try to connect all the all the edges together and you're gonna try to make sure that the um, the corners that are supposed to be hard edges um, make sure that they are supported using these edges that's it that that is all I can say about this process uh, of course the swift tool uh, or the swift loop is very important because it's fast but sometimes when we have surfaces that are or corners or something of that sort that are similar uh, we probably need to use the traditional tools as well so like the ring connect tools Alright, so as you can see here, as we add the Turbo Smooth modifier, it seems way better than it was before, so. So, the, the Turbo Smooth modifier is a game changer. It takes it to the, to the next level.
So here uh, at this point of uh, creating the support edges, it's a little bit, it's a little bit interesting because I can see here that there are so many triangles and uh, the edges, the edges we just chamfered kind of created some problems in the mesh, and this should not be that difficult to deal with. But um, yeah, it, it, as I said before, there is gonna be uh, I expected some. Uh, some manual labor here, so sometimes we're gonna have to do this when we uh, find ourselves in situations like these, but overall it's gonna be okay, it's not gonna be that kind of that crazy. It's gonna take you probably 10 or 15 minutes longer at most. Um, as I said before, what I'm what I'm doing right now is not really necessary. We could have <clears throat> we could have just uh, we could have just um, uh, welded these vertices and these support edges, and we could have been just just fine. So it's not really that necessary. So um, thank you very much for uh, for watching till this point, and I will see you in the next part.